Hello everybody. I don't know what that was. Um, I am just uh, doing a quick video um, for before the actual video. Um, just because I, once I'd uh, watched it back, um, I, I realised that I did the video when I was in quite a vulnerable space. I'd just spoken to my GP and we were talking about medication and, and stuff and, it, and, and I'd been talking to him about why, why I'm taking them and um, and so I, so I was a little bit raw and um, so some of the video might have come across as quite frustrated and upset which is definitely how I felt but um, but I do I think that at the time I, I felt even more kind of vulnerable and fragile about the situation because um, it triggers a lot for me um, what I'm talking about so within the video. So firstly there was that. Secondly, um, I needed and wanted to admit that I wasn't always in the Meghan Markle camp. I had a completely unfounded opinion of her um, from years and years of conditioning of the royal family and about people being gold diggers and 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 I and I did say a few things that were mean and hurtful. Um, about her uh, to friends and family and things like that before um, and uh, what actually shifted that my my feelings and my thoughts on that were um, when I saw her interview with a South African reporter where he asked her how she is and she says you're the first person who's asked me that and that's when I my thoughts kind of shifted for her because I'm a doula and I you know which is a birth partner and and I know about pre and postpartum depression and, and, and started to feel very sorry for her at that point. And then seeing the interview that I now um, sort of am commenting on, um, or rather commenting on the comments that people have made ab about it, um, I wanted to just be clear and truthful that I, you know, hadn't always felt that way. Um, Pat's going to say hello. Um, and I think that is it. Um, you know, generally also I've always felt that because of my ADD I think things really quickly um, and sometimes my frustration can come off as patronising and I don't mean it to at all um, and after watching the video back I was a bit kind of worried that I felt a bit, well, it was sort of seemed a bit sort of vitriolic. Um, so that's it, I hope you enjoy it um, as much as you can, it's kind of a just a bit of a telling off I, you know I don't want I don't want it to seem like that I mean it does seem a bit like that it seems a bit sort of judgmental of of people who were judging her and this is the kind of that's the kind of dichotomy that I feel is that I don't want to judge people but ultimately when they're being so horrible about other people and and affecting other people um and also being so hypocritical um when on Ant International Women's Day I saw a load of women just absolutely annihilating her, um, annihilating her character and her experience. And so I was very sad about that and, uh, and also want it to change. So that's why I have done this video to sort of point out the, 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 fall, the flaws and the faults in um, in that way of thinking which as I say I'm not perfect and I never never not that anyone is because perfection doesn't actually um, exist um, perfection is boring boring anyway um, lots of love to you all peace enjoy the video hi everyone um, I've not been on for a while um, and uh, that's because I've been acclimatising back to the UK but I have a statement that I want to read. Um, apologies if it doesn't apply to anyone who watches this um, but to the people who it does apply to I want you to listen. So. I've not engaged on this subject because I wanted to make the time to compose a reply 
that is as thorough as possible. On International Women's Day, of all days, I could not believe what I was reading from this group. Megan is a mixed race woman. Megan Markle, that is. As if we didn't know. Megan who, yes, may, may have dramatised her tale for an American audience because, let's face it, she needs someone to feel something other than contempt for her right now, is just another human who is trying her best in a very, very difficult situation. Now I know from my own experience, very recently actually, how it feels to not want to live anymore. And all I have is compassion for this fellow human woman. I'm frankly shocked and disappointed that you, whoever you are, do not share these feelings. I do not and will not believe that it has taken for people to be suicide and suicidal themselves before they can sympathise with someone who someone else who is. No one has ever, ever been in Meghan Markle's exact position. So anyone saying William's been through the same as Harry, Kate's been through the same, they haven't. No one has been through this situation. Meghan has had to deal with pre and postpartum depression, then major manic depressive feelings. Again, speaking from experience, it is not easy to express that you have been feeling scared to be left alone for fear of what you might do, even to your husband. The reasons for this poor woman being in this position is because of people's unfounded hate for her. To still put on a performance of Grace every time she was seen in public for the world's press is, I'm pretty sure, not as easy as it looks. She has experienced gaslighting, lack of empathy, had the people apparently protecting her, denying and in fact exacerbating not only the British press but the entire world's media in giving her a character assassination for what I can only see is being mixed race and American. Meghan has done only her best to be accepted by the British people. She so desperately wanted to love her for her husband's family's sake and we have turned our back on her. I personally think the fact she has single-handedly spoken out and unveiled the insidious side of the propaganda pushing media is worth a bit of leeway as to how she did it. If she feels the Little Mermaid, Disney's Little Mermaid, is representative of her story, then who the hell are we to fucking take that away from her? Who are we? The billionaires of the world own both the media and the way people choose to think. Frankly, I'm not prepared to be one of their minions. So, in conclusion, until any of you or anyone else have been through that sort of situation, the same as Megan has, or have it on good authority somehow, being knowing her best friend, who clearly wouldn't be a friend if she was talking to, about her, and saying some of the horrendous things that we, not me, but people, the British people and the media have all assumed because they've been hypnotised by the media or are in fact racists, I would suggest, and you can tell me, you know, you can not do it, but I would suggest you reserve your judgments so that we can move forward to being a non-racist, more liberal, safer, non-judgmental, compassionate, truly liberal and evolved species. We are as you can probably tell I haven't written this bit but we are a disappointment to the future generations. Now I watched I Am Greta on the BBC iPlayer last night 
and I couldn't help but sob the whole way through for this little, not little, for this incredible child who suffers, not suffers, who has Asperger's. She said that herself, that's quoting her. She doesn't suffer, she has Asperger's. And frankly, it is helping that Asperger's syndrome that she has, is helping her to remain focused on what is actually important, and that is the future of this planet and the humans that are on it. And if we keep on behaving the way we do towards our own kind, to our fellow humans, then how the hell are we gonna behave towards others? The other things on the universe, on the planet, that help this planet to rejuvenate. It's a lot. It was a lot last night. And me and my boyfriend, after watching Greta, and both sobbing <laughs> like babies at knowing the shame that we will feel if we as a generation will feel if we don't help out and do something for these kids. We then watched Russell Kane's um, stand up and loved it and love him. And he also has a brilliant sketch or bit where he talks about us loving each other and just being a bit kinder to one another. And I couldn't agree more. So that's it. I seem a little bit upset um, because I am an empath and I feel the the weight of the of the world and also the general pain body that everyone is feeling, that they feel that they have to belittle and and frankly hate another person who is just trying to do her best is to me just incredibly saddening and disappointing. So I'm feeling that and I'm feeling it throughout the world of people who, who think the same as me, which actually in the last couple of days, I've realized a lot of them don't share those feelings with me. And I think that's because of the lack of awareness and a lack of information that there is around mental health and how people feel and lack of research, lack of, you know, there's a, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of research um, which actually helped me realize what my diagnosis of ADD and manic mild, uh, major depression disorder actually meant. And there's amazing research going on, but it's in that world. It's not, it's not filtered out to the general public of how the brain works. And, you know, these scientists and these doctors have, have, have discovered all of these things and yet nobody knows because people don't want to be told about sad things or about or 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 also accept about themselves that they might be suffering too they might have this this mental illness um and it took me a long time <laughs> frankly about 20 years to realize that i had a mental illness which was which had been developed by a life before and a youth uh, of of trauma, um, mental trauma, you know, not physical trauma. Um, that's not to say that my family were massively involved in that, but it was, to be honest, I feel it was more to do with how society was making them feel and their generation before them which was then projected onto us. And we, I, 
not we, I, as our generation, want to break that cycle with my kids and to educate people and my kids on being more for being non-judgmental and more compassionate to other people. And I think that's it. Um, so, love to everybody. People have asked me for a video. This is what you got. I hope you all have a lovely day and share the video and subscribe to the channel because I think there's a lot more where that came from. Now that finally someone on the biggest world stage you could possibly imagine, a woman has, a sorry, a mixed race woman has unveiled the disgusting, grotesque side of people. We forget the media is made up of people. It's not made up by a robot, it's made up by people. And there's a video that I will share on my, on my social media where two young men created a phony production company and asked three of the royal correspondents or royal, whatever they're called, I think that's what they're called, um, people to do an interview that was a pre-recorded interview for the Meghan and Harry interview before they'd even seen it. So frankly, they were making up what is meant to be real news, real opinion and informed opinion on something they knew nothing about, which is what the media does. They don't listen to scientists. They don't, sorry, they do, they do listen, they know exactly what they're saying, but they tell us something different. And it's really fucked. <laughs> Sorry for the expletives, mummy. Anyway, I am gonna put a filter on this. I've, you, you'll see that there's a filter on it because I just feel like a mess, but um, not in my brain. My brain feels better um, on that note. Um, but anyway, I'm sending lots and lots of love and peace and compassion and strength and passion to you so that we can all feel that and feel empowered especially the women and people who associate as women and frankly let's just mention all the lgbtq plus people as well i they are definitely um in that bracket so yeah Thanks for having me.